Good morning, New Eden! Welcome to the Federation Frontline Report, a new podcast for EVE Online that focuses on faction warfare news. We're going to be streaming every single Sunday um, from 5, or sorry, 6, 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, Sometime. On Twitch, on the Golden Age Stories uh, Twitch that we have here. And I'm your host, Frozen Fallout. My co-host is Samson. Good morning, New Eden. How's it going, everybody? Today we have a special guest here with us, Emperor Joe Bain of the Golden Age Empire and CEO of Average Pilots. That's the God King Emperor to you, and you call him your highness. How's it going, Joe? Greetings and salutations, my wonderful loyal subjects. It's great to have you on, man. Really great to have you on. Uh, how is uh, how are things going for you? I, so you just joined up with uh, Faction Warfare, and how, how's that been going? How, how'd you get involved in this? Well, those are two different questions. How's it been going? Let's start with that one. Um, I think I think Joe's a little low, according to the chat. I'm low. Can we turn him up? Chat. Yeah. Can we turn Can we turn Joe up? Yeah. Is it me? Let's see if I can Sometimes turn I up a turn little bit. Down yeah. for no reason. And let me see if I can also. You should be able to adjust him on Discord. All right, try again now. Audio one two three four check one two three four. The yeah, Emperor must I be think heard. that's coming in much better. This is your action news report. Much better, much better. <laughs> All right, fantastic. There you go, your highness. It's because he had me turned down because when we're on comms, I talk so much. I just <laughs> ramble. I ramble on and on about stuff nobody cares about. So the, the war is going good. Um, you know, for us as the gals mill, we're over here just being victorious every day. It's just victory after victory for us, really. We haven't had time to celebrate because we haven't stopped because it's all so good and so fun to be in the gals mills defeating the Kaldari every day every step of the way coming down off the high of fleet nam the fleet failure yep the greatest Kaldari fail in the past decade um now we're looking at uh the agos conundrum you know the Kaldari conundrum of agos they claim they're going to attack agos tomorrow but we'll see know. how that goes <laughs> yeah how's it going hi hi i'm on a show <laughs> you want to come tell the people of the show hi? This is our oracle. The oracle of the gal's mill. This is our oracle. The oracle of Iggy's. That's where we're headquarters. And this is how we get all of the battle plans as the gal's mill. She, we give her the problem. She delivers the solutions. This is how we're able to defeat Dirty Diana and her dastardly dudes. Go play. <laughs> The secret weapon, if you will. It is the secret weapon. Yes, the secret weapon is finally revealed. We have an eight-year-old girl who is our leader. <laughs> and I'm a shadow leader for her. That's how it's done. <laughs> She's your worm tongue. Yeah. How did we get into the war? How did we get in? There were a lot of reasons to get in. Uh... Uh, but mainly, I got bored of flying my Astero around and nobody being willing to stay in the system with me. You know, everybody would just leave when I was around, and it was lonely. And I thought that I thought that if I would join the Gals Mills, that the Gals Mill guys in Fleet would be my friends. That's what I thought. <laughs> and so well, I was able I thought... to convince some other people to do it. Oh, it's it's true that it's true that uh, that Frozen put the put the bug in my ear. You know about the whole fashion warfare. He's the one that came up with the idea. Let's not forget that. But it was from a, a role play perspective. It, it was really just an off the hip shot where I was just like, you know, Joe, if you would make, if we'd make an alliance together, that would be That's awesome. Right. And and then I was talking about well, faction warfare. That sounds like it would be a lot of fun. And uh, and it took you all of like forty five minutes to be like, I'm in, hundred percent. Everybody's going. Oh, yeah, man, I went to the boys. He said that, and I thought about it. I processed it for a minute, and that's when I thought the Fleet guys would be my friends, you know. <laughs> I, I just knew that they would. And, uh, yeah, you know, we went over and took over the Gal Mill country of the Gal Mill. We took over their country with our empire, and they were happy that we took over. 
They liked the new management. The old management wasn't as good. Before, the Caldari were managing the Gals Mill. And now the Gals Mill are managing the Gals Mill. So Time Gunner is wondering, who who is everyone? Um, so um, Joe Bain runs um, Average Pilots. God, God King Emperor Joe Bain. God, too. God King Emperor Joe Bain runs the the average pilots, and then I, I am that. of the Golden Age Stories Corporation. Um, and then combined together, we are the Golden Age Empire with uh, Emperor Joe Bain <sighs> as our golden leader. <laughs> I'm just here in the background over about me. I'm just helping you bask in the glow. That's all. It's helping you bask in the glow. It's all bask in uh, Joe's greatness. Uh, and we were hoping uh we were hoping that we could when we all met at the table that was not round, we came together. You may ask why wasn't the table round? Because the Caldari meet at round tables where they all pretend that they're equal. We never did that. We came in and we said this is the man who will be the boss. It didn't matter if it was me or not, you know, but they picked me. I didn't pick. They picked me. So, you know, you can't be at a round table when there is a head at the table. <laughs> and that's nice. why the table was not round. Right. Right. I've alluded to this before. <sighs> and how is the war going? Probably the biggest event this, that's happened into the war is that... Uh, we completely and utterly baited the Caldaris. We baited them so hard that we got them to commit all of their resources to the place that we were pretending to call home, which was Mirathand. When all the while, we had two different objectives. One was Iggy's and the other, and continues to be, is no Tauros. Everyone knows that. You know That's no secret. But uh, we've been talking about Planet Six, Moon Three, and Iggy's for years now as being our, uh, you know, our last bastion. If we were we were kicked out of our forward staging system, that's where we would live. And we've been mining ice up here for a long time, so it was kind of close to our heart anyway. Somebody has to mine the ice, guys. Yeah, so you guys are setting up. It looked like you guys were able to flip uh, a couple systems over there and. Um... Or you, you've got... Ig Igus is, is flipped right now. Is there anything else that got flipped over there as well? Yeah, when we first came over during Fleet Nam, uh, you know, we all decided that uh, if they were going to hit us hard in one location, we were going to hit them hard somewhere else and make sure they had more than one problem at one time. And so we were pushing some systems up. We were pushing up Ostengul. We were trying to push up Devon. We were always putting pressure on Mirathan just to keep Diana off the grid everywhere else. And then uh, we were trying to push Notoros slightly. And what we were finding was there was very little resistance for Ostengul. And that Ostengul was strategically lo located. It was near Iggy's. Um, we were able to go in and just ninja Ostengul out from under them. Completely took them by surprise. They never even had a response fleet because they didn't have time. You know, it was sitting for a week at around 60%, and we went from 60 to take it in just one evening. Um, after we got that, they didn't really seem to care. And we thought, well, if they don't care, let's peg Harul while we're at it. And then we've secured a pocket back in here near a goes, which we figured could be an attack point for the enemy at any point. Then uh, we, ban we, we began as a corp to discuss maybe moving into that pocket. You know, Aderon does a great job of keeping Fliette secure and keeping pressure on that surrounding area. <clears throat> and for time zone cohesion, us working with the Russian group, with Norman's group, um, was just a great idea. And we went in that direction. Uh, we went in that direction and we decided, well, we'll go for Iggy's. So we went in in one night with almost no notice, and we said we're going to flip the system. We flipped it, um, and now we're pressuring two other systems. Has there been a, a Caldari response? Yes. At the very beginning of our pressure in Iggy's, Destrinius, and Uphalent, after the campaign for Ostengul and Harul was finished, when Fleetnam was over and uh, we came up here, they began 
to stage out of the neutral citadel in Ostengul to retake Ostengul and put pressure on Harul. Um, they had a lot of success at the start of it. Um, we were having a hard time keeping it out of headshot range. Uh, after we took Iggy's, uh, I think that everybody would agree that Harul and Ostengul both just plummeted almost overnight. You know, there's so much deplex pressure in the area now with our 100 person corp here with the traffic between our alliance staging points in here you know it's uh it's it's gone from being a do nothing area where you could peacefully ice mine to being swamped by people and we love it yeah no it's it's awesome um there's been some great fights that i've been having with you uh with the Keldari. um Going out there, uh, one of our main things is to get, you know, staged up and get everything, you know, set up so that we can just dock up, get new ships, go out, you know, combat, blow up, you know, switch up to different ships so we can get into different plexes. Um, I don't know, I, I love Faction Warfare. I've been in Faction Warfare for pretty much since the beginning of Faction Warfare. Um, and I've always liked the idea of there's... Only frigates can get into this. Only destroyers. Only cruisers. You know that kind of yeah. setup really kind allows for you to play levels. The yeah. playing field. Yeah, it allows. So you you can go around and be like, okay, if I'm gonna one v one in a frigate, where do I go to find other frigates? Well, there's low sec sites that are built for one only one. frigates. <laughs> one 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 v one one. <laughs> one v one. Yeah, well, whether you get a one v one or not, you're putting a limitation layer on what is going to come and you also are handing someone time before it gets there to see it on d scan so the environment that it creates is a lot more conducive to being a small gang or a single player uh, more so than you know trying to get through bubbles yeah no and that's um, and that's another big thing is being I'll able to do 1v1 is definitely possible with faction warfare because in frigate combat, depending on you know what kind of tanks are being used, a lot of the times it's over and under a minute, and it's hard to yeah. get to a plex, warp 30, inside of the plex, and and be a participant in that combat when somebody yeah. else is holding them down. Unless there's specific things that I are going yeah. on, like kiting stuff like that, can allow for you to really get um, you know that time limit up. So that you can you can get your buddies in there. But if you're going into a plex and you're kitey, that's you know you're just betting that they don't have a scram in a web because if they do, you're you're dropped. I punched into a plex just a short while ago. There was a uh, I don't know we had, we had maybe ten or twelve there, and they came with five or six. I don't even know what all was there, but I punched into the plex in the middle of the melee, you know. And there's always that moment of nervous system when you have a head full of snakes and a paper thin garmer of punching into the plex and are is someone going to be there to scram you because they saw the garmer on d scam will they be ready and thankfully this time there was not but um uh, it gives you that that feeling when your booty hole tickles a little bit yes yeah, because you're scared rush yeah yeah exactly. the, booty, the booty hole rush the booty hole rush yeah <laughs> yep <laughs> and just like if you're looking down off a, a tall building you get the feeling you know and it, or at least i do the dip the I do. On the yeah, I get the booty hole tickles. Yep. <laughs> That's right. I'm tickling my booty hole right now. Sounds good, Samson. So <laughs> I, I've I've also heard some rumors that maybe you and Sheltark are going to be doing a show. Yeah, uh, we've discussed it. We're we're still in the planning stages, but we we plan for the first episode to be on Wednesday. September, uh, no, excuse me, Wednesday, October the 6th at 2 o'clock Eve time. The, f the first episode, at least, is going to be one hour long. Um, this is going to be broader than Faction Warfare. Uh, you know, this is going to be an attempt that Shelly, it, it's, it's called Tea and Tears with Joe and Shelly. Uh, but we want to get into and take on some serious and meaty topics um, at the core of what makes the EVE player base great, what makes the game great, um, what we would like to see improved, but in a positive way. 
Um, and so we're going to try to take on some of those subjects and uh, interview some folks. And also, uh, there will be certainly be some some uh, some good rivalry and uh, discussion about fashion warfare and the current events and goings on. But it'll all be kept very positive and, and uh, try to make a positive influence on the game through our show. That's awesome. So you guys are doing a little bit more of a broad... Are you guys going to be role-playing through? Because I know Char- Shaltark seems to be pretty solid into, into yeah. role-playing. Yeah, guys. we will. Um, in fact, I, I engaged a, uh, a cosplay outfit creation company, and I've kind of been going back and forth with them about making a uh, King, Emperor, Messiah outfit for me. Um, I, got, um, I, got a, I got a black crown designed, a leather crown, uh, with little blue... Um, ornaments on it, you know, for the tiers of the enemies of Black Rise. Um, and so, you know, I got a scepter. We have some elements coming together. Things are coming together. You know, something I could wear in the house. But, uh, you know, like I told them, I need the full deal. The undergarments, the undershirts, the overcoats, you the robes. Magic underwear. I, you know, I got to have it all. I got to I gotta feel like I'm the king, emperor, messiah of low set Black Rise, Placid, Verge, Vendor, Essence uh, region. Yes. Hell yeah, man. That sounds like that's going to be a fun show. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. And also, oh, yeah, thank we'll you, Macros, for the, uh, for the subscribe. That's fucking awesome. Five months in a row. You fucking rock. Um, and, My man. Uh, and he was wondering, is this going to be like Dune? <laughs> like in Dune? Um... He's going to be Moadib. Moadib? <laughs> <laughs> The, I'll talk to you'll him. You'll be able to summon to Shai Halud at, at, at there, will. Yeah, there would be some benefits to being Moadib, wouldn't there? Em- Emperor Paul, uh, Paul Atreides? <laughs> or like Baron the Baron Harkonnen. Harkonnen. <laughs> Baron Harkonnen. Oh, I think, I think, uh, I think Moadib. You, you will lead the Fremen to victory. I mean, the Gal Mills, the Gal's Mills. The gals mills. Do you guys have any thoughts on uh, on how much new blood, not only from Null Set, but just raw new players to the game, have come into Faction Warfare in the past three weeks? And also the fact that CCP has now listened to us and they're guiding new players to Faction Warfare, uh, which is currently on the test server. That's I'm super excited for. I think Faction Warfare. I had no idea. Yeah, I think Faction Warfare is definitely the way in for PV- people that want to experience some PvP, get some ISK, learn how to to survive on their own and survive with a group, you know, as, you know, we're getting more fleets out there. One of the things I was really disappointed on, uh, you know, I'd go in and out of Faction Warfare. In the beginning, it was epic and it was horrible all at the same time um they changed it up a lot of stuff to make it a lot better but in the the initial beginning there was just fleets upon fleets upon fleets of just random people grabbing 10 to 20 to 30 to 50 people together and just slamming them against another fleet of 10 to 20 to 30 to 50 and it was just constant craziness that was happening you couldn't be in an alliance you had to be in a corporation only the only, um, you you if you were in an alliance, you had to break your alliance apart in order to join faction warfare. So it kept out some of the alliances from from joining, which has not really over the years. Uh, now that they've allowed alliances in, I don't think it's affected too much because you've got you know your entire alliance that needs to be in it. Um, but I I think that in general, from all the experiences that i've had faction warfare is the place to come if you want to be able to jump in on something and just start you know running into fights if you want to get into fleets and and get out there and then have something to do you know you've got systems that need to be taken since systems that need to be defended um and it all has a level of worth to you um and i i I feel like CCP, if they really want to do this, they need to go full steam into this. They need to have weekly events. They need to have their actual devs out there commanding some fleets because this is the this is the fun zone. Like this is not zero point yeah. zero where you're gonna be the where like the dev zone. takes out a fleet in zero point zero and is like I'm gonna go attack goons. Like that would be crazy. 
Like you wouldn't, you you don't want your developers doing that. But what you do want them to do is be like, I think this system needs to go right now. I'm the I'm the dev for the Keldari, and I'm gonna take a fleet out, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say we're gonna spend all day, you know, deplexing. That'd be a fun Sunday time. afternoon, wouldn't it? Yeah, and then you could have the other dev and the Galente being like, okay, let's go do that, and yeah, then have let's, rewards. Let's go stop them or you know, you can do tons of different stuff. You can twitch this stuff. Like, the devs themselves can be running this stuff and doing stuff and interacting with the player base and getting to play PvP in the game on a weekly basis. I'm not saying that it needs to be daily or even weekly, monthly. It's something. <laughs> like, we, I have yet to see... I've seen devs take out fleets and fight each other or go out to 0, 0.0 and just dink around. I've never seen two devs get into, be like, okay, I'm going to get a faction warfare fleet. You get a faction warfare fleet and we're just going to smash into each other. It's convict versus Swifty. You know, let's get it on. 100%. Uh, much as I love convict, I think I'm going to take the Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> <laughs> I love Swift, man. He's he's awesome, and Swift Taylor Swift also good musicians. Um, I also believe uh, Samson, you've got a few questions as well. Yeah, uh, Emperor, Your Highness. Um, I hear you have a a ship with over a thousand kill marks on it. How is that even possible? Well. These are great questions. These are fair questions. These are questions that the people ask often at Planet Six Moon Three. Um, you know, I guess it's worth putting the facts out there first and foremost. The facts, you know, you can only have nine hundred and ninety-nine kill marks on one single hull. Even That's though you may want that thousandth, you may have earned that one thousand. You may have earned more than one thousand, but you can't have them. Because when CCP programs a game, they put limitations and places on things. <laughs> because you don't want something to happen like the graphics from the kill marks in a big fight, you know, would cause the chat server to disconnect. That could happen, right? <laughs> so, uh, 999 right. is the limit. I, I do not currently have a ship hull that has 999 on it. Unfortunately, uh, a bad thing happened to that ship and it's gone now. But, uh, we're working on a replacement for it. We're, we're working on it, me and the boys. We're trying to get it out there. Uh, last few times I took it out, all I could find was bots. And I'm not interested in killing bots with my 10 billion is Casteros. You know, <laughs> it's not fun. I really, I want real fights, real meaningful fights with them. It's a fair yeah, question. Yeah. Yeah, I know that you're, ma you're yeah, making I mean... fun of me for collecting kill marks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've I've never had more than like 36 on one ship, and I think I think the actual that's number a lot. Was around a hundred uh, for you, I think it was around 134. Was it like 100? Uh, on the last Astero that I lost, it had 194 on it when it 194, died. almost 200. That's nice. Yeah, and um, the one that I'm currently in is at 135. I was off by one. I said 130. That was a guess. <laughs> I've, I've, I've not been paying attention. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, kill marks, kill marks are a big thing. Uh, as someone that's... I, I, I love PvP. Uh, and, and for those, I think somebody asked earlier, Time Gunner, uh, technically I guess I'm Gwenevit Kenyon. Um, so Gwen, in-game. And yes, I've only had about 30 six kill marks on a single ship um and and but i lose i lose them constantly because like you know it's not one plays of the things... over what he just said he said only 36 <laughs> said only, only 36 never... i remember the days when i got two and i got jump out of the chair i'm yeah, still yeah. there okay no, I, i'm I had... looking at the gods of kill marks right now and I, i'm I, like I, I five said, said, one like, time yes. i was like i was like i i got 13 kill marks and i was like i'm retiring this gnosis that's a lucky number. I don't want to fucking use that ship. I, no I retired more. a lot of them at ten, and then twenty, and so <laughs> on and so forth. Like I, I got it blown yeah. up eventually, though. <laughs> anyway, but but like it, it's um, it it's hard to put into words the feeling you get, um, when you start. Like like you're saying, like you 
you remember when you had two kill marks, right? Like that was awesome. And and I've met people that was like, I'm, I'm coming up on ten to kill marks, and I was like, call, call me back when you got like thirty, bro. Like <laughs> then worry about losing the ship. He's <laughs> just being a dick. But um, yeah, yeah, red, red, red knows. Uh, Macros in the chat, he knows what's up. Um, I I I'm currently taking a break from actually PvPing in the game, but um, Joe. I watched Joe Bane's, sorry, your highness, uh, God King Emperor Joe Bane's episode on Golden Age stories uh, a few months ago. I don't know. I don't know how long ago it was. It feels like centuries ago. And when he said that he hadn't lost enough ships yet, I was like, oh, that's interesting. Because I, 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 I always obsessed about like keeping my dangerous level up really high. So like that usually means losing less ships and killing more. And so I, I just was like, I don't want to lose ships. But after you said that, I was like, you know what? Hey, I told my buddy, get me, you know, 50 uh, vengeances. And I just, I did some crazy, stupid shit after, after I heard that episode. Like you, when you said you need to lose more ships. And I went I out there. I told you that? Well, you told, you told, you told the, uh, the Golden Age audience that. And 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 ah. that that resonated with me, and I said I I need to lose more ships. That's what I need. That's what I need right now. And I took vengeances into in, into Tama, and and I jumped into uh, blindly. I think it was a I think it was a, a novice or something. I just I jumped to the novice blindly, and there was a fleet of stealth bombers, <laughs> and I was just, I landed right on top of them, and I was like, all right, this is what I'm looking for. <laughs> I, I I managed to kill one outright, and then they were like, "Wait, this one ship is a problem. Let's kill it." And then they started DPSing the shit out of me, and I almost killed a second one, and I died. And I was like, "That was fucking glorious." Like, I mean, that thing was worth a, a mil or two more than the Vengeance. So ultimately, points wise, it was much higher because a, a stealth bomber shouldn't be getting caught by a Vengeance randomly. But you inspired me to do that, and I just wanted to to put that out there it's funny how when you when you change your mindset to one of actually trying to go out and getting your ships blown up you start getting into the situ, into situations that you remember and yeah you know when you could spend a year out just not losing ships and doing stuff and just nothing is very interesting or exciting goes on um you know like when i hop in a tempest and just go you know i often get into fights that are five versus one eight versus one 12 versus one i may lose in the end but if you know if i take a few of those guys down with me and i learn a few things every fight i can you can have a lot of fun and then once in a while you get those huge victories just the massive yeah. victories that make no sense whatsoever speaking of which i was just you know diving down a joe bain uh, rabbit hole the other day on your youtube channel and i found one of those said outings where someone told you they were going to meet you with a fleet somewhere, with destroyer fleet, and I watched that video, and it was it was glorious. Like when you got there, you were like, "Okay, I didn't think it was going to be T three and T two <laughs> command didn't. destroyers and tactical destroyers," but you proceeded to merc like an entire fucking fleet of destroyers, and 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 it was absolutely. You didn't even have a beard yet. That's yeah, how glorious true. it was. There was it's no true. beard. And that was a great day. That's awesome. All of these destroyers. And it was a beautiful thing. And I was like, fuck. And this this was I was watching this during my I'm still on break from PvP and Eve, but like I was watching it during that time and it almost made me come back right away. But I mean, you know, I might eventually, but that was that was like that kind of shit. That's what that's the kind of shit that I, I live for in PvP in general. Hell me yeah. Me too. So we do. We did get a good question here from uh, Raxus the Fuel. Um, what would you all do if one of these faction warfare fights were going off and someone like Goons, Horde, or Test third partied on the fight? Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna direct that to Joe just to see. Uh, you've been doing a lot of fleets lately. Um, how would you feel about? And I'm guessing when they're saying something like Goons, Horde, or Test, they're talking like 50 to 100 people are probably going to be showing up to to the third party on this fight. Um, or if if, if uh, Roxas, if you have like a different definition of how many people, but I'm if, that's what I see a lot of these guys flying around in 50 to 100. And 
Yeah, and this this is not like you know. Obviously, you might piss yourself a little bit, but other than that, <laughs> like what happens? So, in this hypothetical situation that happens in fairy tale land while riding mm -hmm. unicorns, when you're having a faction warfare fleet out there, and goons comes with a fleet to jack up your faction warfare fleet. They really just, I mean, you could fight them and then it goes away or whatever. Like, third parties that aren't Galal, the Gals Mills, the Minjimatars, the Amarians, or the uh, Calamaris, they can't really do anything in Faction Warfare except blow Faction Warfare people's citadels, which really just doesn't matter that much. So, like, if they came, if the goons came and their 400 like man jacked off feet, right? Let's say they come, and they come right now to Dastrinius, the system that we're trying to take. The only thing that they could potentially do is sit on a plex and hope that somebody goes over there and attacks them. While we just ship into smaller ships, and we run the small and the novice all day, and while they're over there jacking around with the open, nothing happens to it because nobody's there to run it, right? Because their fleet ran them off. Even if the Kaldari came over there with the goons, if we just run the novice and the small, we win. They could run the mediums and opens all day, and we still win the victory point war. So, yeah, uh, I so think, I mean, you know, I get what you're talking about, but this just doesn't really happen. It's yeah, and not that's, really a thing. I, I mean, I guess he's saying, I mean, there is third partying that happens to a certain degree. I know that uh, he's saying that Horde is working out of Devon and been third partying lately, you know. Um, in, in Fleet, yes. which I, I, you know, that's a smaller, I, I also believe that isn't giant super fleets that they're bringing down. No. Just, you know, they're, they're coming in with something reasonable and anybody that wants to come in with something reasonable into faction warfare, you'll get a fight. Like we're, we're out there, we're doing stuff. You know, you know where the active zones are. You can see, you know, you don't even have to be in faction warfare to get the faction warfare display up. Um, I think that it messes with it a little bit because it might be depending on where you're opening it up, like, uh, because you haven't picked a faction or whatever. Um, but mine always is, is for the Galente, uh, for example. But, but yeah, like a 20 man corn fleet is about the size of fleets that we can kind of take that we can. Do yeah. If they're in with. a 20 man corn fleet, they'll get a good fight out of us at some point. Um, but still they're not really affecting faction warfare that much. They're just, at that point, it's just another group of pirates that the faction warfare people are dealing with, and we deal with pirates 24 hours a day. Absolutely, And yep. if there's 20 of them or 400 of them, it doesn't really change anything for anyone. It doesn't affect the outcome of anything in faction warfare. Other than people do lose more ships because they're just, you know, they're fighting more. If you got 20 extra dudes hanging around Fleet that are pirates, no matter where they come from, that's more fights for everybody. More fights for the pirates, more fights for the faction warfare. You know, it, more people is only a good thing. If the 400-man goon fleet starts coming, then the 400-man of something else will come to fight them. Right, uh, yep. And but they don't want to come here because of snuff, so... <laughs> yeah. and, I mean, one of the big things, too, is, is that, like you were saying, is that they it's hard for the it, to be a third party. It's hard to affect the war zone as much as it is if you sided with somebody. Now, if you were 100% working with the Keldari the entire time and you put ships here you lived out of here the goons moved into uh this this into fleet for example um that would be different because then they 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 as long as they had a faction warfare buddy with them they could push the plexes they because it doesn't yeah stop you only need one ship it's the same thing like you need one ship for each plex really Right, and so they, they, you could start affecting the war zone to a certain degree, um, but once again, why? You know, you're there's yeah. What a, do you get out of it? Yeah, if there's more fights for you, well, yeah. zero point zero for those kind of fleets and stuff. Now, test. I don't know. Maybe test is going to be running scared and <laughs> needs needs a place to live now, uh, so they come to <laughs> to Black Rise. But that's that's a whole I mean, different. We ran scenario. into them. We ran into I'd that uh, evacuation. <laughs> remember, do you remember the... Oh, were you there? I don't know if you were there, Frozen. I don't think we, I was there we, for an evac. I heard about some stuff. I saw no, some what, stuff. No, what happened was Merc took us out to do some bank robbing. Oh, I was uh, there with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah, we yeah. ran into the, the, the evac of the, in the middle. Like, 
Well, while they were just like, holy crap, why are there three <laughs> no. titans on the fucking uh, grid right now? I don't yeah. know that we, what's going on. We were just in little cruisers, like, trying to rob banks. <laughs> But yeah, I like see them all the time in Notorious. They're they're Notorious Nisawa area. Oh, yeah, I've killed plenty of the tests. place. Uh, we've I've we fought a carrier of recently um, of test that uh, we we lost a ship to, and then we and then somebody got to got to shoot. I, it. I hopped on the kill mail of the <laughs> of the Nidogar the next day, or something like ridiculous. They they brought it out to Tama, and that's what happens, in Tama. Yeah, I would say for the most 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 there's been big alliances who have come into faction warfare solidly and they usually leave because it's not a place for 500 people um you know like for for a thousand man fleet just doesn't there's no reason to have a thousand man fleet running around in faction warfare it's a it's a beautiful place for you know a solo all the way up to around 30 people you know, once yeah. you start breaking that barrier is when you're, you're just, you're not going to find anybody that wants to fucking fight you. And there's a yeah. billion places to hide in low sec. It's not like 0.0, .0 where, you know, you're forced to get into a fight in order to get home or to defend yeah. your home space. You know, in this case, you just dock up. <laughs> faction you, warfare. You go somewhere really else. Solo. Yes. And faction warfare is beautiful for solo. It's the, the place. Which is one be. of the things that I think that, that drew me in because uh i'm a solo player like mostly and so faction warfare or or just pray i mean before 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 actually joining faction warfare just preying on as a pirate preying on faction warfare people <laughs> yeah <laughs> the krill yep. you gotta have the krill remember we said at the beginning of this we needed to repopulate the krill in low sec and the only way you can repopulate the krills is if you recruit some in and, and grow them up a little bit to be krills and tiny fishes. <laughs> and then the whole ecosystem gets better because you can't be <laughs> yeah, a shark yeah. if there's balance. nothing for you to eat. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your, yeah. your food supply needs a little bit of a fluid supply and all the way down. And, and I have done where I have taken a day one alt um, and took them through the, the basic training thing that you get some of some of your stuff and stuck him right into faction warfare got into a fight and killed somebody because he yep. was a kiting ship and i was a brawling ship and he had to land on zero on me and you you, you as a day now i have a bunch of experience that allows me to you know get a web get a get a scram but you can also learn this from somebody i don't, I don't know if day one you'll get your first kill but the more that we have day one people going out there the more likely a day one person is going to get a kill because I will say this, day one, day one, going out with Frozen, I got my first kill. Well, not my my first kill, but my first kill when I came back. And more kills than I've ever gotten uh, hanging out with Golden Age stories. That, like, like I, so many kills. I think it was in four months, uh, over 900 kills with you guys, well, and Solo. And you, you yeah, guys you were it. cranking it up there around Nisua, like... Well, you remember, you were going so hard that I even asked you to get blue to me so I wouldn't have to worry about your bullshit anymore. <laughs> Just the stress well, of it all. I wanted it to go away. <laughs> you were like, well, you were talking about people leaving the system. And I, I can't, I, every time I saw you come in, I was like, I'm, I'm not going to fight this guy, but I'm not going to leave the si system. I'm just, I, I'm, just, I'm not going to go fuck with Joe Bain. I'll kill anybody else that comes around. And I never, I don't think maybe once or twice I'd actually seen you on grid. And it was when I was gate camping in the Taurus solo. <laughs> that was the problem. And I, I, no, but no, no, but I, 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 I never, I never shot at you. I, I okay. I, I did shoot at some of your guys, I think. I'm pretty sure I did. Shoot somebody it's not. Me. It's not that you shoot at me or not. It's when you, when I'm in that ten billion ish ship and I go through a gate. I don't want to see an instalot gnosis sitting there. <laughs> so why not? I just don't like it. You know, could you get me? Probably, Probably not. not. But if I made a mistake, you could. Yeah, I've if gotten, I had to fart really I've bad gotten, while I jumped. I've gotten a lot of cloakies in that fucking gnosis. <laughs> and it bad. does throw off people when you catch them through their cloak, and it's like. Wait a minute, yeah. because what? like if you if you have to think for three seconds about wait, and I had this happen to me just recently where I just got caught in a ship that I could have easily just burned away 
and got away. But instead, it took but me. But you were like, huh? Three seconds to think about it, or probably like three seconds a second. is more than enough time to make your ship explode. Yeah, it was. It was less than that, but I was like, oh, burn back to the gate. Why did I burn back to the gate? I was pointed, not scrammed, so I could have just <laughs> just go my merry way and not even care. But <laughs> but it just it screwed me up. I was like, fuck, what do I do? Yeah. Shit. Fifteen years in this game and I still don't know how to get a ship out of safety. <laughs> you know, from just a regular <laughs> I've been you know, feeling that way a lot lately. I've lost a lot of ships in the past three weeks, you know, just stupid <laughs> stuff I'm doing. I find I'm when I, I play do, Eve more. more stuff. You know, when when you're playing ten or twelve hours a day, a lot of days, you just make a lot more mistakes than you do if you just sit down and focus for a few hours. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's it's true. Just, you get your attention span on other things. You start thinking about the laundry. You know. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's one of my problems with uh, Eve is when I when I usually play it for long stints and times like my ADD takes over and I'm like, you know, and that's after... another thing. One of the reasons why I'm not playing right now, I have like gamer gaming ADD, and I have to switch to another game. Oh yeah, that's, that's yeah. Understandable. I, I'm the same way with systems. Like, if I stay in Pentecostal too long, I have to go somewhere else because I just start uh, I start taking things around me for granted. You know, you start to feel yeah. comfortable, like everything yeah, around me is safe. And that's that's what happened to me. You don't want to feel that way. Think. I, yeah. I, I I got a little too I got a little too uh, comfortable in the Taurus, and then and then we switched to faction warfare, and shit got real. <laughs> got um, real real quick. I was like, wait, you mean I gotta move all my shit? Yes. Ah, fuck. My... <laughs> my... I had to buy new shit. I didn't move my stuff. You know, when we started this, we moved maybe twenty ships a piece out of the NPC station, and everything else <clears throat> that we own just got locked up in Caldari jail. And yeah. so moving to Iggy's, I've yesterday, day before yesterday, I sat down and, you know, that was the first opportunity I've had in a long time to really stage out a system. And I found that I was buying a lot of stuff for faction warfare that I never would have flown before. Huggins, curses, Ashmoos. Yeah. You and know, that, just that some is, interesting things to be flying. That is cool because like I get, I, you get locked into something like I, I think my top ships right now are Gnosis and Vengeance. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a few others like that, but like you, you get locked into it. And, and one of the things about like a vengeance is it's, it is like in your face brawler, like anything Kaidi is going to fucking murder you unless, you know, they're stupid and they drop on you in a plex or something dumb like that, which I've had happen before. <laughs> All the I time. actually soloed a Kiki once in, in my vengeance. Um, and he didn't even, he didn't even kite me. He just he just was like, "I'm coming in to get you," and I was like, "Okay, let's do this." Um, but um, find like getting trying out new ships happens just naturally. I think when you're uh, when you're doing stuff like this, and especially because people are like, "Well, you know that like like a, like a like what one ship is only so versatile. You can't just stick to the same ship." I, uh, you know, out as a solo PvP, -er, a lot of frigate stuff, destroyer stuff, assault frigate stuff, but bigger than that, there's not a lot of activity out there for a pirate. When, yeah. when we got into this faction warfare and we found that it was a lot more small gang and fleet warfare than anything else at the heart of it, no. we started seeing a lot of ships that we just didn't really ever see out in faction warfare before. And I don't know if it's, you know, it could be that this was the case all along, and because I had avoided the heavily contested systems, I never saw it, but, you know, you're just seeing a lot of things out there that are interesting. Augur and Navy issues, sacrileges are used all the time, Hyperions. We saw a Varger yesterday. We, we popped a Varger. To, you know, even today, by accident, I pointed to Tingu. Like, total accident that the whole thing I even saw happened. that one on your stream. I saw the yeah, Tingu. Yeah, it's crazy like, as hell. It's like... Fuck yeah. I saw some retrievers at a belt while I was plexing. There was nobody else around, and I just warped over there. And the Tingu decloaked to scare me off, and I pointed him. As one does. As one does. And then I, I just said yeah. in fleet, Tingu pointed and uphail it, and then the boys were there. They just it was like, swarmed. You're done, son. I think that happened to – we were doing faction – well, we, were, we weren't in faction warfare, but we were camping a novice, I think. And a Loki decloaks off of oh, like yeah. like ten ten uh, kilometers off of us, and we were like, "All right, let's probably, do this." You probably decloaked him. 
Oh I my god, everyone. Remember... I think he got one of us. Yeah, we were with, um, uh, I think uh, Hale was with us at the time. Um, from Nisua Cartel. From the Nisua Cartel. Hale Adam? Yeah, the, the top killers, yeah. Hale Adam, and one of the top killers in the Nisua Cartel was sitting with us in that fleet, just sitting on the novice, and he's like, he goes, he types in chat, because he wasn't on voice, uh, are, are we waiting for someone? And I just typed for someone to kill. And then <laughs> almost like 30 seconds or so afterwards, this fucking Loki decloaks, and we're like, <laughs> let's do this. I think he got like one maybe two like really cheap ships and i think it was in a vengeance at the time we just he got murdered and it was a beautiful beautiful kill and i think hale said like this fleet always makes history <laughs> yeah our wednesday night fleet i'll be right back pretty, pretty you, famous. please continue i'll be right back yeah actually we'll we'll move on i think uh while we're in that transition here we'll move on to some news um and let's actually, you had one, we'll, we'll, we'll save you. I think you had one last question, right? For, for the God Emperor. Yeah, we could save that. We can we'll save, save, the save that for the, for the, for the God end. God. Um, that could be the end. So let's go on. Let's take a look at the war zone here while Joe Bain is out. So we've got some changes that have happened. Um, I've uh, got up here what systems are owned here. Um, so at this time, the Galente only own, we've got a Goes, Halrul, um, Austin Gale, Fleet, and um, Fleet and I am. So those are our systems right now. We're sitting at the highest contested is uh, Austin Gale at uh, 40%. Um, we've got uh, Harul at uh, 36%, 10% for Fleet, which was, I believe, had hit vulnerable. Is that that's correct, Joe, right? We, we had hit vulnerable on Fleet for a short amount of time. Well, he's, uh, he's oh, he's still AFK. Never mind. Um, <laughs> he's coming back. Right. Right. <clears throat> old man kept called. Uh -huh. I had to go be an old man. Yeah. I, I, I think I do too. Right back. So we're just talking right about on. the uh, different war zone stuff that's going on. So it looks like we own a Goz, Harul, Ostengale, Fleet, and um, Iggy's right now. Um, and I believe Fliet was at like 100% and vulnerable for a very short amount of time. And that's the uh, Viet Fliet that you were talking about, right? Yeah, uh, Fliet Nam. The Fliet Nam, that's it. Um, Nam. I'm not sure that Fliet was ever uh, actually at 100%, but it was uh, it was close. I, I definitely remember it being in the, yeah, the mid to upper 90s. 97% one night when I went to bed. And uh, I remember... I tried to be positive. I wanted to stay positive for everybody, but when I went to bed that night, I thought Fleet was done. I really did. And when I got up the next morning, I couldn't believe it was still standing. What an impressive group of guys that defended Fleet. What an impressive group. Yeah, 100%, man. So it looks like uh, No Meaning is saying 94% is what they got it up to. Um, and they thought that they had lost it, um, but then, then they just started flexing. Um, they flexing. were tenacious, and uh, I'm as you can see, Dastrinus at 77.3. Um, and Uphalant has gone from zero to 32.7. So we're doing we're doing the work in this area. Yeah, it's it, so. And what I'm seeing over the last 14 days in faction warfare, and this is something that I'll, I'll um, every episode will kind of go over the last 14 days. Um, which, you know, will overlap a little bit here, but we've got um, Austin Gale that was flipped on um, the first of the month. Um, we had Harul that was flipped on the second of the month, and I believe that was uh, that was you, Joe Bain, uh, working with the average pilots and, and some other friends in the area. Um, we did a lot of the work there, but that was... All of this has really just been a combined effort because without the coordinated effort of all three of the groups, we couldn't have done it. Absolutely. We would not have been able to do it. And, and the three groups that we're talking about, that would be our group. Uh, the, I believe we have the Russians uh, group yep. that, that's working with us. Do we? Do you know the name? Nope. Um, yeah, we, get on, we get on their comms all the time. It's the, uh, the 4 of 10 Reds. wings. Ah, yeah. there we go. Um, and then um, Adr uh, um, Adr Adr Adron, Adron Robotics. Robotics. Yes. And then of course we have been the making FDU. a concerted effort to coordinate the uh, yeah the FDU to reach out to those people and say hey we want you to be part of the plan. 
Exactly. That was held through Adron, Norm's guys. Yeah. G H A V P P C. Yep. Yeah, it was everybody. G H. Oh, I like that. I like G H because I, I don't know if anybody knows this, but my gnosis is always named G Unit. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's the that's our ticker for our alliance. G H. Fuck yeah, I like that. I didn't realize it. I bet I, I didn't stay in long enough to know. I'm going to have to come Valor back. Valora Chords. I have not seen Valora Chords in forever. I used to be the CEO of um, X Meta, Mecha Enterprises fleet that went on to do the fed up stuff. Um, that was after I, um, I I founded it. I ran it for, we did Valora Chords for, for a good long time. Um, uh, we were one of the, the crazy bull, pit bull dogs that just went around and just ate everything that we could possibly could. We didn't care about the, the war zone just as much as just murdering people because that's how I run my fleets. Uh, I just I yes. just want to murder people. That's, murder. But I like to have some, some things to do while I'm murdering, like making some isk and uh, waiting with the... See, I, I, I just purpose. like murdering. I can't but wait. But I'm cool with supporting you... Uh... Uh, making isk so that I can continue to murder. Cal 9mm is uh, saying, I can't wait till the new book gets published, The Rise and Fall of Diana Kim. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the people no, of the Galente, gone. we all really truly do love Diana Kim. The people oh, of the she's Galente, great. She's do. great. <laughs> Entertainment. Yeah, she came She came into Notoros that one day and just started spouting fucking <laughs> propaganda. Oh, and she, man. She, and she <laughs> comes in and she's like, this is a den of villainy and scum. And I said, you're fucking right. It Absolutely. Is. You pegged Welcome. us right. That's the reason why Welcome we, to we, no Torah, sonny. we, we Welcome are to going no to continue to, to keep. We've, we've, we have averted the death of the crack house that resides in oh, the yeah. has, has, oh, has, has I've, the murdered, crack house. I've murdered so many poor bastards outside that crack house. Oh. And we're keeping it. We're keeping the crack house. The, 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 the Uber laser might uh, be going away, um, not 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 way away, but uh, some other humans might uh, might be working with that. Uh, I hear the cartel was interested in in uh, obtaining some of this. So, but uh, oh. yeah, we're gonna keep yeah. the the I love the, the cartel the scum and villainy as much alive and notorious as possible oh, until yes. somebody comes Please. and knocks down our little sandcastle, and then we'll put up a fuck another one because fuck it. Like I That's love right. Notorious. Notorious will always be like our uh, like actual place of living for, yeah. for Golden Age stories. Like that's where we actually will live. But uh, so many memories. I hadn't moved anything out of there, and I don't plan to. I, I gotta tell you, I support the Nissa Cartel only because the Holy Terra is my primary Black Ride staging point, and I do not need to be losing access to it. <laughs> yeah, Holy Terra, yeah. That's Holy where Terra my Astero is at. I've murdered people outside the Holy Terra, too. <laughs> so many times. <laughs> Cal, Cal Mills that would come out, fucking squids would come out. Before I was even the Gal Mills, uh, squids, you know, they couldn't tether to it. So I, I literally sat there, and an algos just came out, and I, and I was just sitting there in my vengeance, and I'm just going to like, all right, you're dead now. I was wondering what the hell y'all were doing out there all the time. <laughs> I murdered a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I, I mostly mostly uh, solo vengeance against destroyers because it's really fun to to kill destroyers in 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 a, in a vengeance. And of course, the last system that we had for the Galente side of the faction warfare was um, on the tenth. Um, so two days ago. We flipped, and now we own, and, and Average Pilots is going in, kicking ass with Emperor Joe Bane out of Igis. We flipped it. It's ours. We're going to fucking keep that shit. Um, Golden Age stories, and the Empire is moving on in, and uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to fight this war zone. We're going to keep things going all over. Kaldari, you can't just sit in Fliet these days. You got to come get us. Come over. Let's fight. We need we need to get more gate camps like blocking all of our shit. <laughs> These Murdering guys, uh, all the squids. It's so easy to bait them. You know, you just say a few words on Twitch and you bait the entire cow's mill. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean to be to be honest though, you are a master baiter. <laughs> this is very true. This is very true. Absolutely. All right, so that is the portion that we have on um, immediate faction warfare news through what systems have been changing, and then 
Um, I believe we have another spotlight here uh, that Samson is going to give us um, on some of the different kind of cool kill mails that have been out in the universe. So if you want to go ahead and pull that up here, and we'll try and get that looking good here. We'll watch the stream. Let's, uh, let's make this one bigger. There we go. So go so, ahead. So... Uh, Joe was just talking about Vargers, like the top kills in the last seven days. It's got a couple of Vargers in it. This is a, this is pretty crazy. We're looking at the top kill here, top kills of Galente Federation. The top kill is actually in the last seven days is a Loki. Is point <laughs> zero two more than the Varger that was killed, um, which is a little ridiculous. I mean, this is probably a bit blingy, I would think. Um, what do we got here? Wait, what? Do I have this? Galente Federation, okay. Yeah, we got some blue, we got some green going on here. What else do we got going on? I'm a little confused, though, because... Let's see what else. I'm on the Galente Federation. The Varger... Those were bots, dude. These were bots? <clears throat> those yeah, yeah, jackdaws, yeah. those boosherins are bots. Yeah, go back into that Loki kill. What the What hell happened is... there? Yeah, so we've got state protectorate, state protectorate, state protectorate, state protectorate. Well, yeah, that's why I'm confused. The state protectorate is... That's, that's their after you, the Keldari's uh, NTC Corporation. It's because of the Federation Covenus there. What is... So the Federation Covenus, that should be an NPC, uh, the Plex NPC, right? It's a mission NPC. Mission NPC. Yeah, yeah, that Bushi Ring guy runs so, uh, missions. So this has got to be a, this. these guys jumped. Why is that showing up on the, oh, because of the Galente Federation being on there. Oh, so okay, guy. Oh, right. that makes more sense. That's... Right. That's 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 hilarious. <laughs> it's actually a kill for the Caldari by a bot. That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so the true the true top kill would be this Varga right here. This squid. Simon Perez. What do we got on this kill mail here? It's like it's an this FU is... with uh Yeah. Ooh. Are those Adam? Hyperions over there that they those dropped are, on? Yeah, two Hyperions. Yeah, those are Hyperions. Hyperions. Uh, that's the, that's what the, the f like the, that that NPC six th is. Oh, this is Hysack. Oh. Okay, so this is in Valor. Oh, this in is a Hysack. gank. Yeah, so, this was not ours. This was a different one. So I well, guess he was running a mission. No, that was a faction war. If you go into him, he's part of. If you go back to the other one. Yeah, so you can see here he is state protectorate, so he is part of faction yeah, warfare. He's he's oh, he was at the Stargate, the and Army Gate. He must have jumped into or not understanding the mechanics, or did understand the mechanics, thought he could tank everything on top of, and they just brought more than what he could bring than than what yeah. he yeah. thought was there's, there's two hype, there's three hype, two Hyperions and a Dominix. Because you can tank the police. The police are not like Concord. Yeah. They're not gonna, they're not gonna totally shut you down. They web scram and I knew you. So, you know, with, with his setup here, it looks like he probably could tank them for a while, but yeah, that was not a, that was not a smart move. Um, if you ask me. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many kills he got though. If he oh, go into related, see if there's a related on that. Oh well, yeah. Okay, Cruiser so Marauder. Polly is know. saying that this uh, that person camps uh, gates in Valor and waits for Gal Mill to jump into Dodixie. They camp Valor to kill the Gal Mill. Who shot well, they into they. Dodixie. Okay, yep, and that makes a lot of sense. Yep. They got that them. Sounds like he that's... got hooked up. <laughs> yeah, that's a nope. that's a good little catch there with that Varger. I'm interested in this Panther, to be honest. Uh, me too. What is going on here? Shadow Cartel Panther. So not even not even Kaldari. We have Kazuya and Andor. 
This is in Placid in point and Gnosis, one. and probably possibly another Gnosis. Okay, so this was a this was a gate camp, right here. Never caught a panther, but damn. Oh, pan panther on in a gate camp. Yeah, yeah. I don't use it. Because I mean, well, he took gate guns, so. Yeah. Oh, okay. So so Shadow Cartel was camping with with a panther, or doing something with the panther, fighting. You know, he well, was... so they're taking gate guns. Yeah, so that means that he they're did something wrong. You know, they must he engaged have somebody faded. somewhere on that gate. Maybe, maybe what he did was he ran into a gate camp and was like, "I'm gonna fight Could've... these fuckers first And they weren't pirate yet, so he just he went pirate first, which is a huge mistake that I've made many times in the past. <laughs> yeah, and it could, uh, uh, no meaning saying uh, maybe it was a blops hot drop. Can, but he can't, so if he got blops you... in, like, how did you lose to two guys? Like, I mean, well, let's look at related. Person. Let's look at related. Uh, no. No, nah, it's just him getting murdered. No. <laughs> he was just being stupid, I think. Is <laughs> yeah, he, he was going gate to gate with that thing. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been killed on a gate. They want to yeah. blops in a panther to kill some gnosises. That's dumb. No, and look and look look at. Ooh, it could have been a mistaken blops though. Instead of him blopsing in the the stealth bombers, don't you have to go with them though? Now I thought there was a the whole no. thing about that. Okay, so you don't have to go with them now. I don't so, think so. So maybe maybe he he misclicked because titans do that all the time. Like that's the reason well, why. What, yeah. Well, what what if it what if it wasn't those things? But what if it was a deliberate uh, like. Uh, Faux Sino. Hmm. Might have been a misclick. Might have been a faux Sino. Might have been a misclick. Could have been, been, could... been, a, been a, a a spy Sino. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah, spy Sino. Let me drop you on the station and drop him right into to his death. Uh, lots of no. possibilities. We don't know. If you do know, <laughs> definitely send a mail to Frozen Fallout Eve, uh, in Eve Online. Frozen space Fallout. Frozen Fallout. <laughs> Or you can do frozenfallout at gmail.com if you've got any any news on any of this stuff and tell us how wrong we were when evaluating these kill mails. <laughs> well, this this is the Varger, I believe, that Joe Bain was talking about earlier. Yeah, yeah. This this happened in Aegis, and, and it's and it's uh, got uh, Aderon and, and G-Age all up in There's its face. There's a Joe face, Bain there on is, there. There's Joe Bain and his Vexer. Joe Bain. It's do you the know... same pilot? Is it the same guy? Well, Wait, that's what? That's what Spectre just said. Wait, what? Yeah. Surely not. Simon? No, it's no. not. No. This is Tom. No, this this right. Varga is a different one. This is a... Uh, let me see here. Y'all crazy as hell up in here. <laughs> Y'all crazy. No, but I, this... did, I thought I saw another Varga earlier, but maybe not. Do you remember, do you remember this kill, Joe? Well, hell yeah, I remember it. This guy thought that he could tank us all. So he warped over to the open, and then when we warped over, he thought that everybody did not have nudes, but then all those Vexers were the corp ones, which are basically just fully nuded. They're all nudes <laughs> and no damage. And, uh, yeah, so he got nuded out instantly, and them 32... No, 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 check these cap boosters out in this dude. Look at his cap boosters. I was about to say them 3200s couldn't keep up, but look at him with a Varger 800s. with 800s. <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> and he's got look at this. He's got blue, blue and 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 shit. And he's using a eight hundred. Yeah, that's a lot of people uh, do not use the right cap boosters. I see that so often. That's gonna yeah. hit you. Well, that's that's well, gonna hit you that's, hard. No, that that that's a that's a thing though too. Because I mean this 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 is an actual cap booster uh, module, but with uh, um, the active shield reppers. I didn't know at first because I'm not I'm not a shield pilot. When I switched to, I got uh, I think it was the Hawk. Um, I had the wrong cap boosters in in my my shield wrapper because you want this. It's exactly the same no matter what's in there, so you get the smallest one so you can rep more. I, I didn't know that. Oh. It's completely different than if you're using it here That's in the situation. Opposite. It's the opposite where you have like it, it's a fucking Varger. You have to have the big fucking cap because it's going to give you more cap. When you need it, and they needed it, <laughs> they definitely needed it. With this, <laughs> what do we got here? We got all the nuding vexers. We got maulers. We got Argur Navy issues. Yeah, 
and Mollus. So like, it's pretty nasty little fleet right there. Isn't yeah, it? I, that's not yeah, something like, I like, play with. How, even, how, even with I do have a with, question with about proper. this. Like, so so there's not a whole lot of DPS showing up in this fleet right now because that to me tells me that it was a slow, painful death. Is that the, true? Well, no, because he couldn't rep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, each yeah, of the extras yeah. is still 400 <clears throat> DPS or so. And, you know, I don't know about no, the right. mollusks, so, yeah, probably more. But... Well, once the rapid... That, that's what happened... Yeah. That's what happened to my paladin, I think. Yeah, if he could have <laughs> bastioned and been able to rep, he probably could have rep for quite some time. Uh, quite some time. Yeah, he got nuded yeah. by smalls, is what uh, Spectre is saying. Yeah, I think the Vexers have one medium on them, but... Yeah, it was all smalls. That's a hard <laughs> way to go. That's so rough. When you hover over the yeah, nude and it says 48 small newts, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be like, what? <laughs> That's a great one, though. I like that. What's the deal with this Chronos? Yeah, let's take a look at this Chronos. Revol oh, fuck these and guys. Murathan. Revolution. It was in Murathan, but who? Yeah. who this is a kill whore mail, isn't it? Fed, uh, we got one little fed nave, uh, fed FDU guy who got zero percent 50 53 damage <laughs> so this is fucked off this is a kill this is a kill whore this what is, is that an in curses cool or in yo that was in curses no in you oh wow yeah that's a that's you a can ballsy. tell because it's got that it's got the maroon shine right there on the uh, little thing uh, how do you even do only 53 damage with an yo probably because he shot once and left from he a distance where he, he was had, it wasn't, and... it was like just, just right at fall off. Just like, pew, and he was like, fuck. Ugh. I've done that before. I've done that before in my vengeance. I gotta say, I did it to, that's how I did the carrier that uh, Nid Nogar <laughs> in, in Tama. I was like, kill whoring for the win. Oh, it was actually with my hawk. But anyways, yeah, kill, this is, this is kill whoring. This is 100% kill whoring. But we do have some recent stuff going on here. Uh, let's see. I like where is it? This one. This is this happened on your stream. Like, uh, you literally had just gotten a Merlin blown up, and then yep. and you took out a, a Garmer, which I'm assuming is like I'm tired of this shit. I'm gonna take out a Garmer. These fucking kiting assholes. Let's get rid of them. These wolves. It was wolves that got your Merlin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, so, yeah. And then you get a fucking Garmer like right afterwards like that's gotta feel good and my snakes let's not forget the snakes i got the snakes too <laughs> does it feel good it feels amazing uh yeah it does. that was actually the one where i warped in on the fleet to get the kill you know i killed yeah, something on the earlier. outside as everything was sliding in i grabbed something and then uh and then when i got in there that garma was just kind of there floating around and nobody was pointing him, so I just ran straight up his ass at 8k, and <laughs> Avivus caught up, and that was it. That was the end. Nice. Oh, it looks like Amelia had damps on him, too. Yeah, that's not very fun. We always have those stupid ECM <laughs> damp ships yeah. around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is a pure G... This is a 100% G-age kill right here. Beautiful. I think that's a... That's a, that's a yeah, that's a beautiful thing. I think, oh, I, think I think that that wraps up uh, kill mails for this. Yeah, I think that that is a good yeah. little wrap up on that here, and I think that uh, we got one last question for Joe before uh, we jump off here. Um, I believe Samson had the uh, question for that. So, God King Emperor Joe Bain, Your Highness, if you will. What is your go-to strain for a being as royal as you are? So the wife likes GG4, and I was doing GG4 a lot. Um, but what I got last time I went there is surprise, surprise, number seven. Jeez. <laughs> Just surprise. <laughs> number seven. It has been a surprise. It's a little bit too thick for my batteries, but... Uh, oh, uh, it's got really high terps, and I don't know. It's pretty relaxing. So so far, I think it's it, it helps me keep chill. So I need a little bit of that sometimes. I get a little overexcited once in a while. Playing <laughs> yeah, Eve, I mean, you know, it kind of brings me down to, to earth. 
Yeah, I, I only I only roll with like I always roll with a hybrid. I don't even know what the numbers are on this thing. It's just gorilla. Yeah, this one's a hybrid. Um, yeah, it sounded like it sounded like a hybrid. Um, yeah, so, usually I get an indica at night and sativa in the day. Yeah, that's See, good. I, yep. That 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 that's that's good. Um, but I I can't I can't do like straight sativa. I become fucking. I'll end up in Devo's pigeon coop. Man, I'll just I'll be fucking paranoid as shit. So I, I do hybrids during the day and then <laughs> indicas at night. Cush, cush for sleepy times. <laughs> yeah, 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 cartridges will give you cancer. Yeah, so will life. <laughs> life, life will give you cancer. At least this will make you and, feel good. And the cigarettes yeah. that I living smoke. is deadly, one hundred percent of the time. It is. And this is Gorilla Glue, I believe, by the way. GG, you can't call it Gorilla Glue anymore. Stop that shit. <laughs> GG. Trademark infringement. It's oh. GG now. Right, right. Same thing. GG. Gorilla Glue number four. That, that was, a, yep. I don't know what the number is on this one. It's four. If it says Gorilla Glue, it's four. I had no fucking idea. I didn't know I was going to get schooled today on <laughs> strains by the God Emperor himself. <laughs> That's I, why I, he's I was the like, emperor, I was coming man. in here. I was coming here like fucking. I know, I know my ganj, but I guess not. <laughs> well, we get all this data up here in Alaska, like uh, on my cartridge right here, is where it was cultivated. Uh, oh, okay. The, you so know, there's probably the, different the rules. license of the people that uh, that did it, and then it shows who it was sold by is on here, and then you get the the strain. The lab test results for THC, CBD, total cannabinoid, there, terpenes, butane, and all that. Oh, actually, the, the containers. Oh, well, let's see. Oh, yeah, I think I on the back of this. So this is these are these are little joints. They're not, and they have they have all that shit on the back. Total cannabinoids, THC, batch, UID. Oh, not as much, but there's something. I don't know. We we only I, get it from the uh, the legitimate store because like well, we don't want to, we don't want to get the wrong thing. Get this is my this is I, I'm in California. Every everything's a legitimate store. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. <laughs> but yes, yes, the real re, the real R dog OG fly stone absolutely. I, I have to say that I think that the the boosters we take outside of of Eve still count towards being Eve. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'll tell you this much, that is guys. A, that is the secret to getting so many kill marks. <laughs> I boost I boost with this. <laughs> I, I was just about to say, let me tell you something. When I was out of my 10 billion in this sterile, there was none of this around. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> this, this leads to dead asteros. Maybe that's why I only got 36 kill marks. It's that's why I only bought mid-grade snakes. <laughs> hell yeah yeah buddy awesome well thank you so much emperor joe bain for coming on the show we hope to have you back as regular guest it's been fucking awesome um and uh thank you all for watching and listening um we'll be getting this out onto our podcast um we're gonna have the federation frontline report we're gonna get that out on anchor we'll be posting this on youtube we'll have the vod here um, and if you're interested in joining the war effort, make sure to put in an application into Golden Age Stories or into Average Pilots, whoever, any FDU, uh, the Adiron, anybody. Get get into the war, get into the Keldari, get into the Amar, get into the the Mimitar. The Gals Mill. The Gals, the Gals Mills. Mills. Let's, let's, let's all do this. Let's have some fun, um, blow each other up, take some systems lose some systems do what it needs to be Let's done all blow each other in space um, if you have any Wait. information or oh, any right. news that you want to be on this show make sure to send an email to frozen fallout in game in in eve online or you can always email me at frozen fallout at gmail.com we will eventually be getting once i get my lazy ass off i'll get a, a federation frontline report probably at gmail.com going for you guys but we don't have that set up yet so this is our first episode. I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Um, I sure did. This is great. I hope you guys keep it up. Did. I'll come on here anytime you want. This is awesome. Hanging out with you guys. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for the subscription. That's fucking awesome. And it's it's been a blast. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put us on our, our out here and have a great week.